Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Aimstone channel. In today's video I'll explain how I'm planning to profit in the Bitcoin market in the next couple of days, then we'll take a look what is happening in the economy and finally Lin Alden will explain how to position yourself for the next bull market. Let's start with the Bitcoin market. As of the time this recording, BTC is trading slightly over $21,000. In fact, it's in mid-$21,000. We have a nice bounce back in the last couple of days. But we still trade sideways until July 13. We all know what will happen in July 13. The CPI numbers will be released for June. And the expectation is 8.7%. However, I believe the CPI numbers will be slightly lower. If I'm right, that we should expect a big bounce back in the Bitcoin market, in the economy and of course the stock market. If BTC bounces back, if you use leverage, then you can make a lot of money. However, this is not a financial advice. And I use less than 1% of my entire portfolio. As you may know guys, I am a hard huddler. Let's say for example I will use $1000 with 5x leverage. If CPI numbers will come lower than expected, then BTC will bounce back. Let's say if BTC bounces back at least by 20%, then I will double my money. I will go from $1000 to $2000. But what if CPI will be higher than expected? Then of course we should expect more downside. I will put a tight stop loss at 5%. So I am willing to lose $50 on this trade, but expect more volatility. Let's take a look at the market sentiment. Currently Bitcoin fear greed index is at 24. It's way better compared to the last couple of weeks. In fact, two weeks ago it was in a single digit. Now we are in 24. Market comes more and more optimistic. So going back to inflation, we all know that CPI for May was at 8.6%. We still remains at 40 years high. As I said, the expectation for June was at 8.7%, which is higher than the previous months. But if it will be lower than 8.7%, that everything will skyrocket. Why do I think that? As I said in my previous videos, because the crude oil it dropped in June by 20% and another very important thing I noticed when I shop in Costco. I usually buy regular stuff. And as I noticed that avocado dropped from $11 till $9. Also watermelon dropped from like $7 to $6. And a lot of small things like this drop in price in Costco. And I think it dropped not even in Costco but throughout the country in different supermarkets. So if this is the case, the CPI is highly likely peaked back in May. Here's another interesting chart that may prove that CPI and inflation come into the end. This chart represents duration through the peak change in annual inflation rate by episode. For example, most investors have been talking about 1980s. This is when the inflation was super high. But how long did that inflation last? That inflation lasted from May 78 until March 80th. So it was slightly over 20 months. But current period of time of inflation is slightly even longer than it was back in 1980s. Notice we were never longer in the inflationary period more than 25 months. So it seems like this inflationary period could be coming to the end. Here is a very cool chart. Everyone is thinking how is the best to position yourself in the next bull market. This chart represents a riot which is one of the largest mining Bitcoin companies in the United States. And of course in the upper hand side in this orange color is just Bitcoin price action. If you want to generate higher rate of return in the next cycle, then of course you will have to be exposed to higher beta. And that's exactly what it is. Right, for example, increase from Corona crash under $1 all the way to $85. So it made 85x in that bull market. While Bitcoin on the other hand side increased from $4,000 all the way to $64,000 in the same period of time. So BTC generated only 16x. So Riot generated almost 5 times more than Bitcoin. But there is also a catch. When bear market comes around, the Riot performs much more poorer. So it dropped from $85 to this current price of slightly over $5 a share. So it dropped by 95%, while BTC dropped to this current price by 70%. So there is a big difference. You want to be in these high beta assets only in the bull market, not in the bear market, which is a very tricky situation. Yes, you can also be exposed to altcoins such as Ethereum and many others. But we know that altcoins carry regulatory risk. If they declare security, then they will be very short-lived. 
but Bitcoin will continue to thrive as we know Gary Gensler declared BTC as a commodity. Moving back to the next chart, this chart represents unemployment claims. As of yesterday, new numbers were released for July 2nd. This is weekly unemployment claims. And according to these numbers, 235,000 people claimed unemployment benefit as of the week ended July 2nd. As we can see, unemployment claims slightly rises. Now it's almost at new annual high. Last time we were back in this level was in January 2022. But let's also not forget that we are at a similar level prior to the corona crash. The good news is the unemployment number still remained at super low level. Currently we are at 3.6%. Just to remind you guys, a national average from 1940s until now was slightly over 6%. So way below that average, which shows the current unemployment market is very strong. But let's also not forget that cryptocurrency laying people off left and right, especially all those lending platforms and some tech sector laying people off as well. I know Elon Musk and Tesla announced that they will be cutting their staff. Also, Max Zuckerberg and Facebook announced that they will slow down the hirings. Some people may argue that we are already in the recession and there could be some valid points. This chart represents consumer sentiment index. As we know, consumer spending counts up to 70% of the national GDP. And every time consumer spending index goes below 2% threshold, it means we are most likely here in the recession. And that's where we were during 2008 housing bubble and 1980s recession. So can we be in the recession? Yes, we sure can. However, let's not forget that recession is very short-lived. Recession only lasts for the few quarters. And after recession is finished, expect a huge market rebound. And that's exactly what this following chart shows. When the bottom 2% reading reached, which was that line during the consumer pricing index, then we should expect a massive bounce back. This chart represents average annual return of S&P 500 following the bottom 2% reading in the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. So when consumer index dips below 2% reading, this is what happened the next following months on average. After the first month, S&P 500 gains 70%, which is massive. Imagine if S&P 500 gains 70% after the rebound, what will happen to Bitcoin? As we know, Bitcoin is higher beta, so Bitcoin will probably gain additional 200%. 200% that will be 3x, so this $20,000 could be $60,000 in no time. But as time passes by, the annual rate of returns decreases. So on the next 12 months on average, S&P 500 gains additional 20%. So in that case, BTC will probably gain 70 or 80%, which still remains very good rate of returns. Now, let's take a look at some on-chain analytics charts. This chart represents Bitcoin exchange net position change. As we see, now we are highly in red. But this is not a bad thing. Usually if we are in red, we have a massive spike, as we saw in late 2020, when BTC was increased from $10,000 all the way to $64,000. And when we won decline, we won green. And when we won upside, we won red. And now we are red again. So this is could actually be a positive sign. Now let's take a look at this following chart. This chart represents Bitcoin price action and RSI. As we can see, according to this chart, it seems like RSI this cycle ending, which may mean that we should expect the following cycle. And following cycle of course starts with the bull market. Okay, now let's go back to some crypto news. First, let's start with Celsius. Celsius pivot starts paying off Aave compound debt with $950 million collateral as price. Okay, that sounds interesting. Celsius, the liquidity strapped crypto lender this week, paid down $223 million of loans on the blockchain protocol maker to free up $450 million in collateral. Now might be trying something similar strategy with two other big decentralized finance platforms, Aave and Compound. Data on DeFi dashboard Zapper shows that crypto wallet linked with Celsius by blockchain intelligence firm Nansen reduced its outstanding balance to Evan Compound to $235 million from $258 million on Friday, which means they paid down $23 million. Should Celsius fully paid off the loan, the crypto lenders will theoretically be able to reclaim about $950 million in assets that are pledged against the debt. 
950 million dollars is almost a billion dollars. So why don't you borrow the remaining 235 million dollars to reclaim its collateral? So hopefully they can potentially open up the withdrawals so people can get some of the funds back. But overall this is great news for Celsius. They keep on paying out the debt one by one and reclaiming their collateralized assets. Another piece of news, Elon Musk notified Twitter he's terminating the deal. Well, why is that? Here is why. Billionaire Elon Musk wants to end his $44 billion deal to buy Twitter. Musk lawyer claimed Twitter failed to comply with obligation to manage agreement. Twitter's board chair Brad Taylor said the company is still committed to close the deal at the agree upon price and it plans to pursue legal action to ensure the agreement. Well, I heard that Elon Musk wants to see how many users I actually bought and how many users are actually real users. And Twitter failed to reveal that information. So this is another reason why Elon Musk is moving away for this Twitter deal. Okay, now let's move on. Let's take a look at this quick video with Max Kaiser and Lil Alden explain how can we best position ourselves for the next cycle. Uh, what next for the 22,000 altcoins in a world in which Gary Gensler says only Bitcoin is a commodity? Th these other coins are being thrown under the bus, and rightfully so, I would think. But what do you think? Yeah, so is, over the past decade or so, which is, which is a pretty short sample uh, because Bitcoin is still a relatively new asset, generally it does well during rising PMI environments, so economically growth, you know, growth is accelerating, and it generally you know, goes through its bear market or its stagnation uh, during declining PMI environments, economic decelerating environments. And there was a big wild card this time saying, okay, well, we have a declining PMI environment that should probably be, be bad for, for Bitcoin and altcoins. Um, but then the question was, how is that going to work with so much inflation? You know, which, which one would end up winning? Uh, and generally what we've seen is that Bitcoin tracks global liquidity very closely. So when you have global M2 increasing at a rapid rate, uh, generally Bitcoin doing quite well as a you know fixed supply asset, uh, you know decentralized uh, you know bear asset. That's a very attractive thing to hold when you have all these different fiat currencies expanding their broad money supply very rapidly. Uh, when they start to contract, that's when Bitcoin and then the you know the whole shitcoin ecosystem kind of starts starts you know running out of kind of euphoric buyer starts to go through this this you know consolidation and you know this this the the cpi inflation that we're seeing now the price inflation that's coming with a lag from the money supply growth and so when people talk about say bitcoin not not being a good hedge against cpi inflation really that's because it was a good hedge against the actual increase in the money supply especially in the global sense uh when measured in dollar terms and now that we're getting kind of the hangover in central banks or at least around the margins trying to, to tighten policy to some extent we have fiscal taps turning off that's putting more pressure on this whole space. And generally what we see in these cycles, uh, you know, Bitcoin, it goes through these consolidations when you have declining liquidity environments. But of course, four times now it, it snapped back very strongly in the next cycle. So it keeps having higher highs and higher lows as it monetizes over, you know, more than a decade and counting now. The altcoins generally respond very differently where, you know, they have a similar timing mechanic. Uh, mechanism where they go up very sharply during that rise in the liquidity environment and then fall. But the difference is that historically, very, very few of them uh, have a second or third cycle in them. Usually they have one cycle, two cycles, and then they generally roll over for good, especially as, as denominated in Bitcoin. And so I'd be very cautious about touching any of the altcoins. Uh, as you point out, a lot of them would be considered unregistered securities uh, based on how you look at the Howey test and things like that. So both in terms of insufficient network effects, Ponzi-like dynamics in many cases. Uh, I think the vast majority are untouchable, whereas Bitcoin is obviously right now it's in, in a very kind of tough spot. But I think as you look forward to the next cycle, I think this is a deep value zone. And one way that the two markets are interlinked is that Bitcoin is often used as collateral for companies to go then and speculate on these altcoins. So if someone puts Bitcoin in one of those lenders, that they own, uh, and then they take the you know stable coins or take fiat uh, dollars, and then they go and speculate on leveraged altcoins, and then those blow up. Uh, their Bitcoin collateral gets liquidated, and then that lending company just sells the Bitcoin immediately. So you have a lot of forced sellers in the market, even though a lot of the actual bets were not on Bitcoin itself. Just Bitcoin was the pristine collateral used in that ecosystem. So that's how they end up being unfortunately linked for periods of time. But it's really about that decoupling over you know multiple cycles. Lynn Alden believes 
that you should be highly concentrated in Bitcoin and not to be playing around with all coins and I kinda agree with her. But let's not forget that when bull market kicks in, all coins usually perform way better than Bitcoin. For example, if you would bought Bitcoin during the Corona crash and held it until the top that you would make 16x. But if you buy Ethereum, you would make way more money. But as she noticed that, all coins usually very short-lived cycled. All coins usually have about 2 to max 3 cycles, but Bitcoin started from 2009 until this current day, and it will remain the king in foreseeable future. Let me know what you guys think about this strategy, should you buy all coins or not?